a legacy of glory. Every driver is striving to achieve this goal. When their endeavor is challenged, these men will instinctively rise to defend it. Whether it is a young star still drafting the first chapter of his story. I don't know what his deal is with me, but he's uh, apparently stupid. Or an old champ looking to add to his. For anybody that's looking for drama for the next couple races, start looking, because I can promise you I'm going to start making the highlight reel in the next couple weeks. At Michigan International Speedway, legacy will be on the line at a track that refuses to forgive those distracted by emotion and rewards a calculating mind that will take a chance. Roaring speeds will be reached, but fuel conservation must be considered, subjecting them to a daring game of racing roulette. NASCAR's TNT Summer Series continues. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway, NASCAR on TNT. This is a track that most drivers have at the top of their list. Our expert crew chief, Larry McReynolds, certainly has had a lot of experience here. Larry, you almost got a speeding ticket running down to your uh, cutaway car there. <laughs> what are your averages today, my friend? Well, Lindsay, when you think about a 400-mile race that we maybe won't have a lot of cautions, you have to look at the trends of the patterns. And what I've done, I've looked back to the last nine races here at Michigan in June. The first caution average lap 32 last year it was lap 74 before that first caution number of cautions average six the longest green flag run average 75 laps we'll have some green flag stops i can promise you and the last caution flag average lap 172 that's 28 laps to go lindsay Weather does not look like it's going to be a factor today. So far, we are lucky. The drivers getting ready to fire up their engines. They're getting the final conversations in with their crew members, deciding what strategy. Now to the command. Welcome back. The stars of the new movie Grown Ups in theaters June 25th. Here's Adam Sandler and Kevin James. Yeah. Thank you. This one. Come this on, for the troops overseas. Gentlemen, I've ever seen Kevin James and Adam Sandler doing it their own way. They said it'd be great. That sure was. When we come back to NASCAR on TNT, it's time to go racing. 80 miles west of Detroit in Brooklyn sits Michigan International Speedway. NASCAR teams have been racing here since 1969. Today, this two-mile oval plays host to round 15 on the 2010 NASCAR schedule. We're ready for NASCAR racing on TNT. This afternoon, Sprint Cup Series action presented by Captain Morgan. Hello and welcome again, everyone. Good to have you with us for NASCAR on TNT. With Kyle Petty and Wally Dollenbach, I'm Adam Alexander. And Wally, I know when you were a driver coming to Michigan, one of your favorite stops on the circuit, many of these dri drivers would agree. So what is it about this place that all you guys seem to like so much? Well, there's so much racing room here. That's the biggest thing. And, and it takes a lot of horsepower. It takes a good car to get around this place. But there's so much room to race. And, if you're, and the driver makes up for a little bit. Because if your car's not working right, there's lots of grooves to choose from. You start searching the racetrack and you find a place where your race car will work. And, and you get three wide, four wide here and it's a lot of fun. One thing about it, Kyle, is though, even if you have a really, really good race car, pit strategy comes in really, really big here. Yeah, pit strategy is, is, is all inclusive here. This is one of those places that you start talking about fuel mileage on Monday after the Pocono race because you're coming here. So pit strategy is crucial. I mean, you've got to know when to get in, when to get out. You've got to make good time and you've got to be with the draft. And that's an important thing today that's going to come up with the spoiler. They're going to draft down these straightaways. One of the other storylines we'll talk about today, undoubtedly, Ford and their success here over the years. 
and it is a Ford that is out front right now. Ford will soon attempt to complete 1,000 laps in the new 2011 Mustang V6 on one tank of fuel, all part of Mustang's 1,000 lap challenge. Go to Mustang1000lapchallenge.com for your chance to win a 2011 V6 Mustang. What a great looking car. And now we take a look at today's starting grid. For the second time in 2010, it will be Kurt Busch who leads him to the green flag. Jamie McMurray joining him on the front row. Jimmy Johnson has never won here at Michigan. Casey Kane won in 06. Row three, Jeff Burton looking for his first Michigan win, a long time, a two time Michigan winner in Jeff Gordon. You see Ryan Newman and Denny Hamlin in row four, and it really doesn't matter where your favorite driver starts because you can go back deep in the field and have a chance to win here at Michigan. In fact, a year ago, Mark Martin started in the 32nd position, drove all the way to the front, and eventually spent the end of his day celebrating in victory lane. Carl Edwards has won here twice. He starts in the 19th position this afternoon. Wally, I think you're going to dial up driver 99. Carl Edwards, this is Wally up in the booth. Got a copy? Got you, Wally. How's it going? It's going good, man. Hey, you've been to Victory Lane here twice, uh, and everybody's talking about the Fords possibly making the turn. This has been a great track for Fords in the past. You've got something for them today? I hope so. I hope so. I'm pretty excited about, uh, about coming here and representing Ford. You know, they, uh, they've been doing a great job on the road, and we just, we just got to get them to win. So, you know, just uh, this Affleck Pearson was good in practice, and, and hopefully we can come through for them. And, you know, I, I learned something about you. I didn't realize your wife ran here in 1982. That's pretty cool, man. If what you're getting at, Carl, is my wife wears the uniform in the family, yes, this is true. I did not say that, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, just, I'm glad my wife doesn't want to come race. I had to, hate to have to compete with her at that, but hi, Kate. I love you. Well, good luck, man. Uh, how was your car in the long runs? Because it seemed like your car was one of those cars that was really consistent on the long runs. It seems pretty good. There were a couple cars that were really fast. Uh, you know, the 9 car was one of them. And since we can go look at his notes, that, that'll help us a little bit. But we had that speed right out of the gate. So hopefully it holds on for a long run because I think, you know, like normal, that's what's, uh, what's going to win the race here. Well, good luck, Carl. I'll try to break that uh, streak and uh, get that forward in victory lane maybe today. All right, thanks a lot, Wally. Have a good one. Carl Edwards made his career debut here back in 2004, and now we check out the built Ford Tough driving force. Carl Edwards, a multi-time winner here at Michigan. And as we mentioned, he also began his career here a number of years ago. One last trip down pit lane before we go green. Gentlemen. Multiple lanes and Wally was talking about a little while ago. The reasons why Jeff Gordon loves this racetrack, considers it his favorite. Of course, he's won here twice. That'll put you in a good mood too. He told me just moments ago, this track and his car seem to be working together really well this weekend. He's hoping to improve on those two second place finishes he had here a year ago in the two races here in Michigan. Phil? You know, Ralph, it's been a feast or famine this year for Jamie McMurray. Started out with that huge win at Daytona. He's had three other runner-up finishes, but only one other finish in the top ten. Kevin Bono Mannion says in order for us to get those top fives consistently, we're going to have to keep up with the racetrack today. He said the sun's going in and out. He said we're going to have to keep up with that. And, oh, by the way, we need to take a look at our fuel mileage. And by virtue of his second-place qualifying run, he has one of only six cars with openings on pit road. So that may help him on caution flag pit stops, Marty. Phil, it's been talked about how Jimmy Johnson lost both races here last year on fuel mileage. I asked Chad Canals, do you start playing the fuel mileage game from the beginning? He said, my job is to make a race car fast. He and Johnson have done that week this weekend. Everybody in the garage area says Jimmy Johnson, the man to beat today, Matt. Marty, the big question mark for Juan Pablo Montoya. What happened to the speed of his race car from Friday's practice to Saturday's? Completely different change and setup on this 42 machine. The good thing, he finished top 10 here a year ago. And Larry Mack. This is one of those racetracks where Juan Pablo Montoya should fit right in because you can run the Richard Petty, David, Le David Pearson line all day. That very high line up against the fence. 
Yeah, Matt, lots of options here when you get into this race. But, you know, throughout the countdown of the green in the pre-race, a lot of talk about the four teams. And they have put all the bullets in the gun here. And you know what? Those guys were fast in practice. When I look at one Ford team out there, the drivers won here twice. The crew chiefs won here a couple of times. But Marty Snyder, they're going to have to put their work gloves on. They're starting 39th. That is a long way to the front. So, Todd Perrin, how do you get that car from 39th to the win? Uh, hopefully we got a good fast race car and, um, you know, make some calls here in the pits and uh, get us some track position. These guys had good pit stops all year long, and um, Matt's done a great job driving his uh, tail off. So hopefully that's what gets us up there at the end of the day. Todd Parrott told me earlier today if I'm in the top ten and halfway, I'm a happy guy, Adam. No doubt about it. He understands the numbers, Marty. So with that, we go to our Burger King race analysis. 400 miles here this afternoon comprised of 200 laps around this two-mile oval. You see the pit window, 42 to 46 laps, and once again, pit road speed very important because of the possibility of green flag pit stops, 55 miles per hour there, and to the rear, the 34 of Kevin Conway. Kyle Busch changed an engine on Friday, and the 33 of Clint Boyer in a backup car after crashing in practice yesterday afternoon. I don't think he really liked that first car too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think he was too upset that he that he got it in the wall. And, and and it's you know this is going to be new to him, but I don't think it's it's critical. Boyer got no practice time with that backup car. A number of drivers deep in the field to start today's race that we will keep our eye on. But as we get the green flag, we focus on the front. Kurt Busch, the pole winner in a Dodge. Jamie McMurray outside in a Chevrolet. Fans on their feet as we get ready to go racing for the 15th time in 2010. We're glad you're with us for NASCAR on TNT. We are green at Michigan. That's about the prettiest starts I've seen in a long, long time. time. Junior, Junior jumped out of line right there at the very end, but other than that, these guys just stayed in line. Oh, man, he's a little bit looser. Jamie McMurray on the high side. Got the car a little bit sideways, but hung on to it, and he's leading. The aggression pays off for Jamie McMurray. Another front row start for him here in 2010. Look good coming down the back straightaway, but Kurt Busch, the pole sitter, rallying back on the inside. McMurray all clear off four. He will lead lap one. They are three deep back near the 10th position. That's David Rudiman on the inside of Jeff Burton for position. And just in front of them, Hamlin, Reagan, and Biffle making it three wide. And there goes Kurt Busch, new leader off of two. Montoya and Gordon working together, and there are teammates from Joe Gibbs Racing battling for position. Hamlin around Logano, he goes after Gordon. You really see that, you know, what Kyle was talking about the, at the opening, the draft really comes into play here again. Now with these spoilers, uh, you, you'll see these cars line up, five, six, seven cars, and if there's one car down on the bottom, they lose a lot of ground. As soon as they get to turn one, you'll see it fan out three wide, but they really try to get down the straightaway and the backstretch nose to tail because the draft is important here. Yeah, we didn't have that issue. Or the, it kind of went away. The draft kind of went away. Some of it did when we went to the wing because the wing was more efficient for downforce, but it created less drag behind the car and less drag on the car, less of an opening behind the car. With this spoiler, everybody's talked about gear rules. We talked about it last week at Pocono on the TNT race, you know, about the gear rules and the race shows this spoiler changes a lot of things it's like a ripple effect across gears and engine combinations and the way you drive McMurray led lap one he's running fourth with three laps behind us Casey Kane went around for second you saw Jimmy Johnson get by for third McMurray could lose another position Ryan Newman in line to take a spot and here we are side by side for a spot in the running order Jeff Burton to the inside of David Rudiman as you ride on board with Greg Biffle yeah, you see Biffle's up on, half back here, Biffle up on the high side. A lap earlier, he was down right on the white line going through three and four. So he's already, he's searching for that grip. That, you know, his car is working a certain way right now, and he's trying to find a place in the corner where his car feels the best. How much of the early part of this race, Kyle, is experimenting with your car and figuring which lane it likes on track? The, the first few laps of the race at Michigan is trying to get 
in your place where you want to run. And it's not really experimenting. You know where your car, you just want to get clear of these cars. You see these cars running too wide. You see them fanning out three wide. As you see this happening, the first, second, third place cars are checking out from these guys a little bit. So what you really want to do is find the place that your car is comfortable, work it in. And you, as you saw that shot down the front stretch, everybody was in line. You see Carl down on the inside. He's looking for fresh air. These guys are just drafting by him. And how about Martin Truex Jr. driving right up the middle between Roush Fenway teammates David Reagan and Carl Edwards. That's the battle for the 13th position. And boy, I, I think Carl lost about three spots right there just going down the straightaway because he was not up high in line. And he's still stuck down there. Kurt Busch continues to lead. Last time around, we completed five laps. His advantage over second place, Casey Kane, three-tenths of a second. And, and we'll, as we follow this, notice the 56 car of Truex. He goes in in the middle of one and two and goes all the way to the wall at three and four. That's what's special about Michigan. You can run all over the racetrack. Jeff Gordon, the power move on the outside, slides in front of Newman. And there you see it as they get into the corner, Newman to the bottom side. Gordon jumps up front, and now a battle for the race lead. Kane trying to go around Kurt Busch could not make it happen off a of turn two. I'll tell you, did you see Newman crank the wheel on that thing oh, going yeah. into one? I mean, he turned that thing hard left. Your car's got to be working pretty good in order to, to be able to do that. You got to be confident that it's going to be there when you turn it. And I think that's the big deal it is, you know, these guys, it's all about momentum. So they kind of don't put a lot of wheel in the car. When you feel confident enough that you can just crank it to the left and get back to the gas, that was impressive. Let's hear from Phil Parsons. Jamie McMurray reported that his car is really loose to start with. Started off that way, has not reported that his car has changed. You know, guys, we talk about running up high. I was talking to Alan Gustis and Cucci for Mark Martin. He said, we know that you can go up high right now, probably with no rubber down. It probably may be as much as a half a second faster, but that's going to rubber up up there. So we're going to have to be able to run the bottom of the racetrack. So that's what a lot of guys are talking about doing is making sure their car will work on the bottom. They know they can go up high right now, but maybe not later. Quite a battle here from fifth on back. That's Hamlin in the fifth position. Side by side for sixth, Montoya below McMurray and Jeff Gordon knocking on the door. And going back to what Phil said, you know, there's a lot of truth in that, but here at Michigan, normally your car gets tight. It gets to the point where you can't turn the steering wheel and the car is gonna slide up the racetrack whether you like it or not. Yeah, whether you, you know, when you go back and, and, and they mentioned the King and Pearson and, and Earnhardt, you mentioned the old drivers, they pretty much stuck to a groove and then as the race would go, they would work in a new groove. These guys that race today instantly run all over the racetrack. So if your car is working on the bottom and, and you like it there, you'll run on the bottom. If you have to go to another place, that place is just as wore out as the bottom was. So it, it kind of changes all these guys in the way it is, uh, the way they drive a racetrack. Draft, not something we talk about a lot when we come to Michigan because of all the other elements in this race, but you saw David Rudum a moment ago settled right up underneath the rear bumper of Jeff Burton. Draft does play a role here, doesn't it, Wally? Yeah, no, it, it certainly does, and you can see the one car is having a hard time. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's awfully loose, and, and he went in way high that time, mainly because he was saving the race car. But yeah, draft is pretty important at this racetrack, and we'll see it, we'll see it all day. Hamlin goes to the inside of Ryan Newman for fourth. There is Kurt Busch leading Casey Kane at Michigan. NASCAR Spring Cup Racing from Michigan, presented by Captain Morgan on TNT, is brought to you by Sprint. Proud sponsor of the NASCAR Spring Cup Series. By Progressive, making it easier to buy car insurance by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way, and by Toyota. NASCAR on TNT rolling through the Irish Hills of Michigan. Kurt Busch has opened up a seven-tenths of a second advantage over second place Casey Kane, and we want you to be a millionaire. Fans have a chance to win up to a million dollars by going to NASCAR.com slash TNT million, and all you have to do is pick the top 10 finishers in today's race or any race over the course of the next five weeks. You pick the top 10 finishers in order. You could win up to $1 million. It's the TNT Million Dollar Fan Challenge. And we can tell you someone win, will win $1,000 just by signing up. The race within the race. These three cars have been going at it for a while. Two back. 
one. I, I think we've run Keep 15 laps, all and this clear. position has changed almost all 15 laps. Yep. And, and it depends. You know, everybody's tried low, everybody's tried mm -hmm. high, and, and, and the 11 car really is working pretty nice on the bottom. He dives in this corner. You see him go down the front stretch here, and as they get to the first corner, the 39 and the 24 are up, he goes down. Back, That's one, on board with Newman. One He's back. in fifth, and right behind him, side by side for sixth. Outside is Gordon. Inside is Hamlin. The, the problem is when you're down there, Kyle, unless you can really roll through the center really, really good, you can't get off the corner and clear that guy. Yeah, exactly. He, you see the 24 coming out. He's got a good run on the 38. He gets right there. Mm. Boom. Man, he just, it, it's like it lost the nose yes, when he got, he, he got in back of that air. So fast. No air. Yeah, he's closing so fast right there. Boom. It just, it, it, the car just loses all its downforce, and he's so close to it. Doesn't seem to have hurt the car at this point in time, but it's, it, you're exactly right, Wally. When you get to the corner and you dive to the bottom, it was a decent shot a minute ago where you saw, and right here, you see the 11 kind of gain a car length on him right in the middle because he goes to the gas, but right here, he loses too because the engine's just not pulling like the outside line is. And that was a great shot, Wally, to illustrate the various lines that you can run here at Michigan. They, they were stacked in three different grooves when they entered the corner, and there goes Jeff Gordon, yeah, finally look at, the inside. But look at Jeff Gordon. That's a slide job right there. Yep. He had no intention of going to the bottom of the racetrack. He dove in, went to the middle, and let that car slide up. That's a typical, that's what you see Saturday night in the, in the world of outlaws and all types of short track racing is that slide job. Problems on the front straightaway brings out our first caution of the day. It's Marcus Ambrose sliding through the infield grass. You talk about a driver that was outstanding in 2009, that has fought every possible issue this season. You have it in driver 47. Ambrose gets our first caution of the day at lap 18. 18. And we have a winner in the booth. Yes, we do. Let's see what happened. What? Oh, he's oh well, he was saving it, and he got tagged. Yeah. I mean, he actually had it saved, and, and that other car, I couldn't tell who that was, just came up and tagged him in the left rear, and that's all it was. Yeah, and, but it looked like he, almost just the same as Jeff did, when he got up there, the car got a little bit pushy. It jumps out to the right, and, and as he checks up, there's nothing that the, the 78 can do. On board with Stewart. You see Regan Smith and the 78 get up there in the contact. Come on, come on, come on. Get through. Still green, still green. The good news is not a great deal of damage suffered for the 47 of Marcus Ambrose after he hit the wall. So should be able to make some repairs and stay in the race. Yeah, I didn't see the right front, but I don't think there's any problem in the right front. But you, you want to make sure, and Larry mentioned it uh, earlier in the pre-race, the, the front fenders and all that stuff in the front is really, really important here at Michigan. You know, you can bang up the rear, I think, a little yeah. bit and not lose so much. But if, as long as your front fenders are clear, that's what's really important. That valence, those front fenders and that valence and those struts that hold that valence in place, and that, that was a really good shot uh, from the camera guys. That was a really good shot that you could see that those struts didn't appear to be bent. When he went into the grass, he went in backwards, and the car spun around instead of going in and digging in like we see yeah. so many cars. And like we saw the 11 car at Charlotte earlier in the year, it just dug in and rolled it back under. 19 laps behind us here at Michigan and the first opportunity this afternoon to come to pit road. Kurt Busch, the race leader, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, Juan Montoya, Ryan Newman, the top five. Pit road is open and it's about to get busy. Kurt Busch going to lead him down. We begin with Ralph. Adam, this is a good break for Casey Kane. The temperature on the number nine Budweiser machine, it climbed up to 260 degrees. They're going to go to work on that grill, cleaned it off really good. He was also a little tight, so you're going to take a half round of wedge out, Marty. Jimmy Johnson, bottom of your screen, said the car was loose, especially into one. He said it got worse the longer they ran. They're going to go down. About a round on the track, Mark Jackson making that call, Matt. Posted a Kurt Busch is a car a little slow up top. That's why he's trying to run the bottom more. They're sticking their game plan. There might be some two tire stops in this time, but they're going to go with four. No adjustments, Phil. Matt, Jamie McMurray was in. He said his car is a little bit loose in through the center and up off the corner. Loose all the way through. Not crazy loose, just a little bit. So Kevin Bono Mannion took one pound of air out of the right rear. Talk about pit strategy, Matt Yoakum mentioned it. We could see some drivers take two tires. Perhaps that's the reason Robbie Gordon and Tony Stewart were on the move. Kurt Busch is the leader.
aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. New Fuel Max tires help you have a winning fuel strategy. Cleanup of caution number one behind us at Michigan, and we are set to go back green. Tony Stewart, Kurt Busch on the front row. Stewart took only two tires on that exchange of pit stops, and we are back under green. This Stewart spun the tires a little bit there on that restart. Didn't lose too much on the two. Here's where the two gets a run. Yeah. Just like a freight train. And, and the bad part, where you really feel bad is being Tony Stewart on that inside. You know you went to the gas three car lanes quicker than he did. But that outside line and the momentum that's built up, it just carries you, man. Yeah. Let's go to Marty for more on Tony Stewart. Yeah, guys, I talked to Darren Grubb, and I said, why the call for two tires now? He said, it's early, really didn't have much to lose, and Tony felt like if he could just get up front with these guys, he might be able to run with them. So they don't expect to obviously stay in the lead, but if they can hang in the top five, top 10, they'll be happy with that. Well, yeah, and there's a lot of truth to that, Marty. Obviously, we've been talking about it all year, about how being out front is so important. It makes your car handle better. And, and if you don't, if you're not stuck in the middle of traffic and you can get in the spot that Tony's in, it's like your car is a totally different race car because you've got more downforce on it to help it make it stick through the corners. Yeah, and that, that's an excellent point. And that's what Tony and those guys did and Darian did last week to have a great finish when they were up there. I don't think Tony was happy with the way his car run, but he had a great finish because of it. Another thing. As, as we, as 38 must have just jumped out of gas because they're freight training him for whatever reason. But another thing, you know, whether your car is loose, whether your car is tight, this is a good time to try two tires to say, okay, which direction did it send me? So late in the race, if it co does come down to one can of fuel, you don't mind putting two tires on to correct your car because one can of gas is two tires no matter what. We talked about experimenting with your line on track, a little experimenting in the pits in the early portion of this race as well. That's Stewart right there you see in your screen second. Montoya behind him. Hamlin and Jimmy Johnson have combined for seven wins this year, and those two together on track racing for the fourth position. Look at this, four wide through one and two. And Jimmy just drives down in front across the front of the 11 car, which shows that the front of his car sticks really good. Even though he was behind the 20 or the 42 car, he had enough go that the front just stuck and he turned left. Johnson did not qualify well last week at Pocono, but worked very hard throughout the afternoon to get to the front. Doing a nice job early today. He qualified good on Friday here at Michigan, and he's worked his way up to third after he gets around Montoya there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the 48 is loose, but he's driving it loose right yes, now. He is. This is the second time in two laps I've seen that car get sideways. What's the word, Marty? Uh, yes, that would be loose, Mr. Dallin, back if you cannot tell. And what Jimmy said in that first run, he said it actually got worse the longer they ran. But what he did is he went to the high line, and that helped him a little bit. He said when he went high, kind of took that looseness out of the race car, tightened it up a little bit for him just by where he was running on the racetrack. You drivers use that once in a while, don't you? Well, yeah, and it, it, it's a little bit surprising, I guess, that it actually stayed loose because on this track, usually when you burn the fuel off and all that weight goes to the front, the car gets tight. So they must have been really Really, really loose at the start of this one. Okay, everybody out there watching in TV land, remember what the nine just did. He sucked up behind the 11 and the 42, jumped all the way to the inside and passed two cars. Not because he has 100 more horsepower, but because that spoiler is creating that gap and that hole. He got a good run up off two, and that's the draft. That's the perfect example of what the draft does. The cars get too wide, and you're right behind them. It's like a car driving by a bicycle on the back straightaway, just shot out of a cannon. It's like actually if you're going down the freeway and you get behind a tractor trailer and it's like that push of air and then all of a sudden you break through that push of air and there's like no air right there. And that's really what it feels like in these race cars. These two fellows met at the beginning of today's race. Clint Boyer in the 33 Cheerios car right behind him in that blue M&M's machine, Kyle Busch. Both started at the rear. And each have enjoyed a nice run through the field. You look at our biggest movers today. Boy, you're the headliner. He's up 22 positions. Kenza doing a nice job after a poor qualifying run on Friday. And you saw Kyle Busch with an engine change here Friday morning, moving nicely through the field. Jimmy Johnson to the inside of Casey Kane. And Stewart, the other driver to the outside, he's going to try and get. You know, the 48 is handling well, but it 
also looks like it's handling well on the straightaways. It is handling. When he goes to the gas, it's handling very well right now, it looks like. But you see Casey get a good run, go to the inside, and try to get back up in line. That's that. The whole deal is these guys can draft around each other, but if the, if the hole's not there for him to jump up in, you'll see the 48 come right back on the outside. And just a few hundred yards ago, it looked like the nine car had 100 more horsepower. These three drivers, second, third, and fourth. You're on board with Tony Stewart. He's the runner-up. And as they head into turn three, Johnson again sweeping low underneath of Kane and low, Tony yeah. Stewart as well. Can he clear him off the corner? And look at Casey take advantage. I, I, I'm going to tell you, this is, this is good racing, and it's good racing because of the spoiler, because that's what's changed this part of the race up here compared to what the wing was. These guys could not do this before with the wing because it just didn't create the turbulence, and it just didn't create the air gaps and the, and the holes. But this is Michigan right here. This is cool racing. Last time around, it was Stewart second, Kane third, Johnson fourth. Now it's the other way around. All three of those drivers chasing Kurt Busch, who has opened up a 2.2 second lead here at Michigan. And now we take an inside look at what's happening now in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint and Evo 4G, America's first 4G phone. Kevin Harvick continues to lead the Sprint Cup Series points. He's 16 in front of Kyle Busch, the 18 just in front of him on track. And our fastest lap time today here at Michigan, 38.60 seconds around this two-mile oval. For more NASCAR stats and live in-car audio, check out NASCAR Sprint Cup Mobile and the new Evo only from Sprint at Sprint.com slash speed. And by the way, the quickest lap of the day turned by the man who has been out front throughout the afternoon, pole sitter Kurt Busch. His lead right now, 1.3 seconds over Casey Kane. We showed you Kevin Harvick on track. He's 25th in the running order. Let's get more on the point leader with Matt. Adam Escucci of Gil Martin's biggest concern going into the race, being stuck deep in the field with long green flag runs, and that's coming to fruition. Harvick, as you mentioned, only gaining three spots. It's a drop of the last green flag on the restart. His car this run, like the first run, starts out terribly tight. He loses so much time at the beginning of the run, it's hard to make up this distance on this 29 machine. They made an adjustment the last stop. They're going to have to take a bigger swing on their next visit to Pit Road. Juan Pablo Montoya, another solid qualifying run. He is fifth on track. And Tony Stewart, who took those two tires when teams came down pit road at lap 20, has now slid back to the sixth position. But, it, but he seems like he's kind of settled in. You know, I, I, you're, you're obviously going to lose a little bit, especially on the guys with tires. But it's not like his car fell no. off a bunch. So th this is something that they're banking on. They're thinking about going to this move possibly later, later on. Later in the race. And, and, and that's two good positions or two good reports right there because you see one from the 29 car. He's mired in traffic. He's stuck. Whether he's got four tires, whether he's got two tires, but he can't make any progress. Tony started at the front, and so he lost three or four positions. Who cares? He's still at the front where they're not getting into lap traffic yet. They're not there, and he's in good air right now where Harvick is trapped back there. Talked on Countdown to Green about the fact the Fords had not won this season. Casey Kane, the highest in that category, second. And there's Jimmy Johnson. He was the runner-up when we went to break a moment ago, but he slid back to the fourth position behind Denny Hamlin. That car's still a little bit free right there, that 48 car. You see it right in the middle of the corner, rotate, and it's like it catches him. And then once it lands, then he can go to the gas, and, and he's okay. But right in the middle, it just seems to bobble a little bit. A few spots behind Jimmy Johnson, his teammate Jeff Gordon, currently scored in the eighth position, Ralph. You know, prior to that first pit stop, Jeff Gordon was very happy with his race car, and he didn't want any changes. It was just a little tight, but for the most part, he says this car's pretty good. Listen to what he said on the radio as soon as this next run got underway. Now uh, we're, well, I don't know what's going on, man. Really bad, loose. Step forward, step forward. See how tight it gets there, my dude. Tighten it up for the start. And just no front or rear grip. Step forward, step forward. Don't miss some short tracks. This is to see where it goes here. 
Well, Jeff is fighting through it right now. He's running back in eighth position. He's been talking with Steve Latart. This is part of it, guys. You got to search down for another groove out there to help that car come around a little bit to get to that next opportunity to let your crew go to work. Yeah, hey, Ralph, it seems like these guys, you know, the adjustments that they made, they need to make uh, much bigger swings at it because some of these adjustments aren't really, re the cars aren't reacting to. Well, that's it, Wally. They didn't make any changes this last time around. They were very happy with the car, so they just kind of let it go. That just shows you how fast the track is changing. As you guys brought up earlier, they start laying that rubber down. Those grooves start to change. So what was good early might not be so good now. So you either have to adjust your line or your crew has to adjust your car. They went trying to adjust the line. Apparently, that didn't work too well. Next time, they're going to go to work on the car. Yeah, whereas earlier the 29 didn't make a big enough adjustment. So those guys are going to have to make a big swing at it. So yeah, I'm surprised the track is changing that much. Plenty of time to work on your race car, not even 50 laps in. The today's 200 lapper here at Michigan, Kurt Busch continues to lead. Michigan International Speedway, 80 miles west of downtown Detroit. Kurt Busch continues to lead the hell of a good Sour Cream Dips 400. He was the pole sitter today, and he's been dominant early on. A couple of weeks ago, All-Star Weekend, Kurt Busch won a million dollars. You could win up to a million as well by playing the Million Dollar Fan Challenge at NASCAR.com slash TNT Million. You've got four laps to go in and make or change your picks to lap 50 today. Go in, get it done. You could win up to $1 million. Just outside the top 10, Ryan Newman around David Reagan. Reagan's best ever finish in the Sprint Cup Series right here at Michigan, third. He also had a third place finish at Richmond and Talladega in his career and he opens up the inside on Newman trying to grab that spot back and just behind them Matt Kenseth not a good qualifying effort for Kenseth he started in the 39th position driver 17 up to 14th and looking for more and as these drivers sorted out on track we get more from Larry McReynolds down at the torque and now we have caution. Debris. Debris caution. It's our second of the day. It happens at lap 47. And Larry, things a little quieter on track now. It makes your job even easier, huh? Yeah, you can actually hear me. But Adam, <laughs> you've heard Wally and Kyle talking about clean air and stuck back in traffic. And the reason the car changes the way it drives is when you're out in clean air, there's nothing in front of your car. You're getting maximum front downforce. Now, I want to do a little NASCAR 101. Front downforce is like someone pushing down on the front of this car. It's really making those front tires grip. But when you get behind the car, you lose that downforce and you almost get the feeling that someone's trying to pick the nose of the car up, actually pick the front tires up, and the driver will be complaining about the car not turning. That's the reason I think late in this race, you'll see a lot of guys do what Darian Grubb and Tony Stewart do, go for two tires trying to stay up front in that clean air. That was a perfect way to explain that. That was a good job, Larry. I mean, that's exactly what happened. It's just, you know, when you push down on that nose, you're looking for grip. Those tires are getting down in the racetrack. And, and, and when Larry said you pick up on the nose, it's literally how it feels when you're driving a race car. You'll turn the wheel and it feels like you've got no tires on the ground. Yeah, I, I, I tell people a lot of times, it's like if you're on ice, people that live in cold, cold weather climates, when you're on ice and you turn in your driveway and it skids that foot, foot and a half, and you think, oh my God, I'm gonna end up in my yard, but then it bites and it goes on in. Imagine that at 180 miles an hour barreling off <laughs> one of these corners, lap after lap. Sounds like garage fun. Door. <laughs> Here come the leaders, Ralph. Yep, and diving into his pit stall is the number nine. Here comes that Bud Ford. It's Casey K. Now he's having problems with the right front sliding a little bit. They're going to take air pressure out of the right rear. Marty only about three tenths of a pound. That's it. Jimmy Johnson says, I have a couple of things going on. It's rolling tight, but when I get back to the gas, it's too loose. So they're going to continue to go down on the track bar. They also make a wedge and an air pressure adjustment. Matt. 
Kurt Busch that the car was good. They're going to make a track bar adjustment and a small air pressure adjustment to try to help this two car at the beginning of the run to get a little more speed early on. Phil? Matt, Greg Biffle was a little bit too tight up off the, or too, a little bit too loose up off the corner on that first run. They went two rounds down on the track bar. Now they got it too tight. So they took one of those rounds back out. Right now they're keeping an eye on those 14, that 14 car that put two tires on. Greg was talking to Greg Biffle, his, crew, his driver, and he said, hey, we're gonna keep an eye on that. It worked pretty good for the 14. Casey Kane, the man that lost the most positions during that exchange, as far as the drivers inside the top 10. Kurt Busch holding serve, that number one pit stall, paying dividends for the Blue Deuce. And now time for the AFLAC Trivia Quiz. Get ready, gentlemen. AFLAC process, processes claims quickly, usually in four days or less. Who set the race speed record here at Michigan International Speedway in 1999? Any ideas, guys? You, you don't have to say. I just want you to be thinking about it, all right? I don't have an idea. All Do right. You? 99? That was the last century. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved on. I've moved on. I'd have to think about that one. You guys are a big help, you know that? <laughs> Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Was it a... Well, help us with the manufacturer of the car. Yeah. I'll give you a hint. It was a Ford. 99. Was it a Yates car? <laughs> I said it's a Ford. Wally, you, you want me to give you the answer? All right, Dale Jarrett. <laughs> I'll guess. Let's go Dale Jarrett. You, it's, I'm going with him. I'm, here I'm going with him. him. Okay. All right. Who is it? Well, congratulations. Hey! Oh, we got one right! Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. New Fuel Max tires help you have a winning fuel strategy. That was exciting stuff right there. Clint Boyer to a backup car, and now he's on pit road. There, guys, that's good, that's good. Looks like it's gonna be. If you got work to do on your race car, a, a long caution early certainly plays big I, dividends. I'm trying to figure out what happened. Did they break a hood pin there, and, and that's what they were trying to fix? Because I don't think he made contact with anybody. Hey, Marty, what's going on down there? Yeah, he didn't make contact with anyone, Wally, and the hood pin didn't fall off. But somehow, and again, this is a backup car, as you guys mentioned, a portion of the hood was coming up, and they noticed it on the pit stop, so they brought Clint down this time and basically taped it down as best they could with as much 200-mile-an-hour tape as they could find. So it was coming up at like at the seam? Correct, at the seam where yeah. it meets into the front end. Wow. That could be that could be a big problem at 180 miles per hour here on the straightaway. So so a hood as Marty's still there, so a hood pin's not un, not undone and the car hadn't been hit. That's that's strange. It, unless a weld has broke on the frame. You know what I mean? And the weld itself it probably did because they had broken. a drill there. Yeah, so, so the weld has broke and it's kind of lifted itself up, and that's that's kind of freakish, but it yeah. does happen. Marcus Ambrose brought out the first caution of the day. He was a lap down, but did receive the free pass. The restart comes. Kurt Busch, the leader in the outside lane. Hamlin's going to drive it in there. He's been really, really good down on the bottom. But he's just got to get enough to clear him, and, and I'd, be, I'd be moving up right now. Yeah, he's been really good at driving that car down on the bottom, and, and uh, he pulled that one off. Yeah, his car really rolls into the corner and to the center of the corner and almost through the center where he can go to the gas really early. Denny Hamlin, the new race leader, able to get around Kurt Busch on the restart, and now the battle for third heating up. Montoya and Johnson going at it off the four. And as we see Hamlin officially get that last lap lead as he crosses the start finish line, any surprises from Kurt Busch using that outside lane on the restart because he has the choice as the race leader, obviously. Yeah. I think as you heard on the pit stop, they made some adjustments to try to make that car better on the get go. I think that's where he's been having a little bit of trouble on the first or second lap. Uh, it, it's been a little bit of an issue. And I think uh, uh, Matt brought that up, but I don't think he's got anything to worry about. As good as his car is, I believe uh, he's not going to let Hamlin get too far away. Got to continue to keep our eye on Carl Edwards. He's moving up, started 19th, riding fourth. And One back to Dale Jr. coming in the bottom inside. Now you're on board with his teammate, Greg Biffle. 
back to the front. Wally, you said it. Kurt Busch not going to let Hamlin get away. Yeah, it's funny on how these cars, I mean, these cars are all supposed to be built the same, but they have their own character. And you'll you'll get times where you'll get a race car. It, it just doesn't do anything for you for the first four or five laps. But the longer you run, the better the car gets. And I don't know why that is, but there's a lot of times that uh, you'll have a car that's good for the short runs. And I think right now they're just trying to adjust on that two car to where it's a little bit better on the restarts. Because obviously the restarts are pretty important these days with this, you know, side by side. Dale Jr. won this race two years ago here driving around Greg Biffle. And the 88 has been loose all day, or I don't know if that's what it's doing first, but it's obviously getting sideways a lot in the corner. So he looks like he's had his hands full today so far. But he's up in the top 10. And if you can stay in front of the track position game at a place like Michigan, you can be in the hunt, and certainly the 88 doing that right now, Marty. Indeed they are, and Wally is correct. It's been a loose race call for Junior the entire day. They tried a couple of things to get it a little bit tighter, but remember, Junior finished third here in the race last August, and they pretty much have the same setup today inside that race car. Lance McGrew said that we're going to continue making it tighter if we can on every stop, but Junior said even though it's a little loose, he's pretty happy with it, guys. Well, it's a comfortable loose then, and, and that's okay. An uncomfortable loose here at Michigan is when you drive down in the corner and it wants to get yeah. sideways as soon as you turn the wheel. For him, I think he's he's able to get down in the corner. It's loose right in here, right before you get back on the throttle, and that's a car that you can actually drive. And that was, that was perfect right there because you show it being loose and the distance from the left front tire to the white line, he's on it, and the left rear is two foot out. That's how loose that car and how free that car is when it gets in that yard position. What are you seeing with Dale Earnhardt Jr., Larry? Well, what I'm seeing, I, I have to believe they're relieved that it's just doing one thing, that it's just loose, because even in the closing minutes of final practice yesterday, Dale Earnhardt Jr. chose Lance McGrew. The car never does the same thing twice. It's loose one lap, it's tight and tur not turning the next lap. So I have to believe, they're, guys, they're relieved. At least it's just doing one thing and one thing consistently. Dale Hart Jr. continues to ride in the 10th position. He finds himself 4.7 seconds behind the race leader, Denny Hamlin. He had led only five total laps entering today, but he's got the field in tow here this afternoon. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing today in the Irish Hills of Michigan. Presented on TNT by Captain Morgan, Denny Hamlin leading this race by 1.2 seconds over second place Kurt Busch. And now time to answer our AFLAC trivia quiz. Who set the race speed record at Michigan International Speedway? The goofballs in and, the booth already and, answered and that. And the two <laughs> impatient <laughs> former drivers Sorry. have already told you, Dale Jarrett. Okay. And, and yes, okay. Wally, don't ask us. Don't ask us if you don't want an answer. Yeah. Now and, you're it may be list. wrong, but we're right. going to give you an answer, okay? <laughs> you, hey, I never have to solicit <laughs> opinions with you two. That's I'll exactly you right. That. That's impressive. 173 miles an hour by Dale Jarrett. Carl Edwards just settled in behind Jeff Gordon, Matt. We talk all about balance, especially when we come here to Michigan International Speedway. They made a track bar adjustment for Carl Edwards to help through the center of the corner. The car now a little too free on entry and exit, but his spotter, Jason Hedleski, who grew up about 25 minutes from here in Clinton, Michigan, helping him with different lines that others are running on the racetrack. And Adam, in fact, he was calling the Bush Kane line a modified top version. They run the middle, and once they hit the center of the corner, they go to the high side. Try that, he said, for Carl Edwards. That, that's a good point that Matt brings up because, you know, when you're in a driver, sometimes you kind of get stuck looking for something that you think is working. As we look at the biggest movers and Kyle Busch up 23rd, Kent's at 18. A lot of guys are moving up. But what that spotter does, that spotter will look around and see what the guys that are beating you, where those other guys are running. All of a sudden, he'll come up with something that you haven't tried. Yeah. So it's very helpful. No, it's incredibly helpful. And how many times have you done this? You, you see the car in front of you, and you change lines, and you run him down, and, and you think you run him down, but you about halfway run him down, and he about halfway came back to you because all of a sudden they start giving you your times, and it's like that line wasn't even any faster. It was just a different line. So it's good for the spotters when they're able to tell you. But there's nothing worse than being driving that or sitting in there driving that car, doing all you can, and he's like, Hey, you might want to move around. We may move around. I'm just <laughs> hanging on, man. I'm, I'm going where it wants to go. 
And then there are times where you see a car <laughs> running that's beating you and go, I'm going to run his line, and you just about bust oh, your yeah. butt and go, I can't do that. Yeah, sorry. Do not do not <laughs> remind me never to go there again. Casey Kane won here in 2006. Trying to gain a position here. They're going after sixth. He and Juan Pablo Montoya. Excuse me, that battle for third on track. But you see how when you get to the corner, how you can roll into the corner. Oh, he gets, he gets sideways here, but he still yeah. stayed in the gas. That was a good pass. That was a good pass. Ralph and Casey Kane. Ralph? Well, Casey Kane's car is not perfect. It's pretty darn good, though, and he is definitely in the hunt today. But one thing Casey did was he stopped and talked to his crew on pit road before he climbed in that number nine today. He told me, I don't normally do that, but I want these guys to know that if we have one good run today, one good performance, we all put it together, we can turn this season around, gain a lot of momentum, and get on down the road. And he is exactly looking to do that here today. When they did that last pit stop, things went well. He jumped on the radio and said, guys, great job. Keep it up. We've got a good car today. you got to admire the attitude from a race car driver who knows when this season ends, he's going to be on the move. Yeah, and, and, and that's hard sometimes. You know what I mean? And, and this is an interesting grouping right here. We see the 20 <laughs> Are they the giving enough, They're giving yeah. each other a lot yeah. of room here, aren't they? There's the well, they were. That's known as the Pocono Gap right there. It's like 16 and a half feet, okay? Yeah. So that's what we're going to call it. And he's like, please get me away. But, but you know, that, that shows a lot of class and a lot of professionalism from the nine car yeah. to say, you know, I know I've only got, you know, 15, 20 races left with you guys, but I'm going to give it all I have. Let's give it all that we have, and we can get something out of this season. Wally, we need to give Martin Truex Jr. a striped shirt. He may need to be the referee riding here between Legato and Harvick, and actually, the drama ended quickly. Harvick drove right around these guys. That moves the point leader up to 19th, and now Mark Martin, a part of that grouping from 20th on back. Truex, Logano and the five of Mark Martin. So Denny Hamlin leads this race. He grabbed it away from Kurt Busch on a restart moments ago. 67 laps complete in Michigan. Hey, I'm Denny Hamlin, and you're watching NASCAR on TNT. Seventy-two of two hundred laps complete. NASCAR on TNT, presented by Captain Morgan. This afternoon, live at the Michigan International Speedway. We're glad you're with us. Joe Gibbs Racing has been dominant of late, winning six of the last nine races. It's Denny Hamlin out front today. Let's go through the field. Here's Matt Yoke. And Adam, you talk about two guys who had a, a great two months. Denny Hamlin has won three of the last nine races. Out front, the first stop, no changes, but the last stop, they made a slight air pressure change to try to help his exit. He says it's still a little too free late on exit. The two of Kurt Busch. Meanwhile, they made a track bar adjustment. He told Steve Addington, as we go, we'll learn more. The track bar adjustment made the car tight in the apex, but now we have moved our problem route to the entry part of the corner. Casey Kane is running in third in car number nine. They took three tenths of a pound of air out of the right rear in that last stop because the car was loose. Now it might be a touch too tight. Man, hard to believe that only three tenths of a pound of air made such a drastic change. And the guy around trying to chase him down, Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42. The science project evidently has worked. He's been pretty solid. Too free to run the top, but the car is not bad. He says the car needs a little more help through the center of the corner, Ralph. Jeff Gordon's got his car running in fifth place right now. Still searching for grip, especially coming up, up and off the corners. The car is also a little tight in turns one and two, Matt. And you talk about Carl Edwards running in the sixth position, going back and forth between Bob Osborne and Carl. A lot of conversation about the entry and exit, a little too free. But he says that the car has an arrow push issue when he is stuck back in traffic. A little more clean air on the nose of that 99, Marty, and it comes alive. Well, for Jimmy Johnson on the last stop, Matt, there were a couple of issues. Chad Knauss was able to fix those with an adjustment on everything. Track bar wedge and air pressure. And Jimmy just now radioed to the team about three laps ago. Said guys getting much more comfortable on this one than the previous one, Ralph. Well, Jeff Burton in car number 31 is running in eighth position right now. He's been pretty quiet on the radio this run. He's been searching for rear grip throughout the afternoon. Now, they made some air pressure adjustments in the rear tires. The biggest problem, Phil, is that car is just not rolling through the middle like he'd like. Well, 
David Reagan made no changes on la on the first pit stop. Second pit stop, they did a little bit of air pressure. He was getting a little bit too free in and to the center. Just a couple laps ago, he reported to Donnie Wingo that right now the car is a little bit too loose all the way through the corner. So they will tighten that car up on the next pit stop, Marty. Bill Tony Stewart hanging in there in the top 10. Remember, he took the two tires earlier on this last stop. He did take four tires. This is the car you may remember from Texas. Tony really dominated the early part of that race, got in that big wreck with Jeff Gordon at the end of that race. Right now, Tony says the car is loose, and the time's starting to fall off just a little too much to his liking. Larry? Yeah, I've been watching David Rudiman in that double zero car. He's kind of been hanging about where he started. He started ninth. He's running 13th right now. But when you look at his last six races, he has gained 11 spots in the points after a disastrous start. And you know, guys, even with 12 races to go, teams and drivers are starting to talk about points. We've been talking a lot about Casey Kane in that nine car right now that's running in the third position, has been up in the top five most of the race. I know he's 240 points out of the top 12, but what they have going for him is in 2005 with 12 to go, Matt Kenseth with 320 points out of the top 12, and he came back to make the chase. Kane, a driver that is capable of going out and getting on a run and winning on successive weeks. Casey looking good today. He's third, some four and a half seconds behind race leader, Denny Hamlin. NASCAR Sprint Cup Racing from Michigan, presented by Captain Morgan on TNT, is brought to you by The Home Depot. Proud sponsor of Joey Logano and the number 20 team. For updated stats, news, and information about Joey Logano, visit homedepotracing.com. Denny Hamlin picking up where he left off a week ago. Victorious for the fourth time this season at Pocono. He's leading here today. Kurt Busch, Casey Kane, Juan Montoya, Jeff Gordon make up the top five. And now we take a look at the Gillette Young Guns driver update. We told you Denny Hamlin's out front. Casey Kane having a good afternoon. Carl Edwards, one of our big movers today. There you see Ryan Newman in the top 15. And a driver that caught Wally's eye during the break, Kyle Busch, started at the back of the field today with an engine change. And he's all the way up to 14th. You see Kyle here looking for more. Yeah, he's on a mission, as usual. Uh, he has been uh, picking them off. His lap times have been pretty good, and I don't know what he's saying about his car, Marty, but he's going in the right direction. Let's just say the mission didn't get off to a very good start, Wally. They actually set up for very sunny conditions. I talked to Dave Rogers about it this morning, and in fact, Kyle called him after the truck series race yesterday and said make the race car even tighter because the racetrack loosened up much more than Kyle thought it would yesterday. That turned out to be a bit of a mistake. So what they did on this last stop, they pulled a spring rubber from the left rear spring, and this car came to life, picked up four tenths of a second. After they pulled that spring rubber out, Kyle said it is right on the money right now, and Dave Rogers has told him, now we're back in the ball game. Let's take it from here, running 15th right now, but moving up to the field wall. Talk about Kyle Busch being a part of the Gillette Young Gun family. And fans, be sure to visit your local Target store to pick up the new Gillette Fusion Pro Glide Razor in stores now. Wow. Did you see that 88 car? That 88 car got so sideways. I think that <laughs> I think the 18 checked up. Yeah. Thinking he was going to spin. He actually lost ground. That 88 is hanging on right now. Somebody. He rolls in and rolls free through the center. But when he picks up the gas, that thing is just sawing up off the corner. It's just waving. As, as he as he comes up, but he's doing it every lap, consistently every lap. Consistent. every lap. And you know what? And and and, and have driven in the past. You, you know how it is. It's okay if you know it's going to do the same thing lap after lap because you kind of know where you can catch it. You kind of know how far you can go. It's like some of the pit guys have said so far. When you've got a car that pushes and then is loose and then snaps and then jer and you don't know what it's going to do, it takes your breath lap after lap. He knows this thing's going to be free, but he can count on that. If, if you're on the gas and it's loose, you can control it. Yeah. Because you're on the gas and all you got to do is roll out of it to give it some bite. All these drivers going to have a chance to make adjustments when we come back. Green flag pit stop on the way you're watching NASCAR on TNT green flag pit stops underway here at the Michigan International Speedway Dale Earnhardt Jr. as we've seen several times in the last few minutes when an extremely loose race car they do an air pressure adjustment he said he wanted to clean the grill a little bit worried about the oil temperature Ralph Marty, we've got Casey Kane pitting as well. He's going to take a little wedge out to loosen him back up. He says when the sun comes out, the car gets even looser. Now, they've had temperature issues all day, too. You can see some fluid spewing out of the car, Matt, as they battle to keep this car cool. More leaders hitting pit road. 
the 99 of Carl Edwards. They're going to make a wedge adjustment on that Ford. A little further up here, road, the two of Kurt Busch. They're going to backtrack a little bit, take the track bar adjustment out. They made the last stop. They've made a wedge adjustment to help on entry and also an air pressure change as well. Marty. Matt, Jimmy Johnson leading his pit stall said this car is just riding way too much on the right rear. Chad Canals with a wedge and air pressure adjustment trying to get this car to tighten up. They have not been able to get it tight. Go exiting the corner for Jimmy all day long, Matt. And the 11, Denny Hamlin pulls to a stop. Look for a wedge adjustment on this car as well. He wanted a little more help late on exit. The adjustment not completed yet. The second can by Scott Wood going in. Looks like they're going to go with just an air pressure adjustment on this stop for the 11 of Hamlin. He's away. A lot of nice looking pit stops down there just now. I mean, everybody did a really good job on their stops. That cycle of green flag stops began at lap 88. Uh oh, no problems fuel pressure. for Hamlin. Still running. It may have picked up air in the pit. Ooh, that's going to cost him the lead. There goes Kurt Busch. You saw him drive by Montoya. Now it's dying. Okay. A a all right, what he's basically saying, did you hear what Mike said? Mike said it may have picked up some air in the pits. That means they were all but out of fuel when they came in. There's air in that line. There was air in the bar, or there was gas in the bowls in the carburetor. And that's when he came down pit road, he parked. But somewhere in that pit stop, there became an air pocket or an air bubble between the carburetor and between the fuel cell. Matt? he started to pull out of that pit box, you can hear that 11 car a little sluggish trying to get the power down. Yeah, they're going to have to be careful on yeah. that, not to cut it close if it gets to the end of this race. That'll cost them a race. Okay, but here's something that they've got that nobody else has right now, okay? They've got one fuel green, one full green flag stop under their belt leading the race, not running in a draft. So they know that's my max number right there. I can't go any farther than that unless the driver saves me some or unless I run in a draft. So that's a piece of knowledge that Mike can put in his book and that Denny can put in his book and say, okay, if it gets down to two extra laps, I'm gonna have to either save or I'm gonna have to draft. If it gets down to say eight or 10, I'm gonna have to get back in the pack and race myself. But, but you can't even match that lap. You almost no. need to come in a lap earlier, right, yes. Matt? Absolutely, Wally. Mike Ford just told him they will play a little more conservative on this run and for the rest of the race. Mike told him he should have been good for about two more laps. So information learned, we're gonna put use from here to the finish. And you know that, that that's that's good stuff right there because you've got you've got a crew chief down there leading the race thinking he's got a cushion and all of a sudden boom he finds out he doesn't have a cushion. Now I want you to look at this. The two car has dropped back into the clutches of the nine car. That happened on pit road. As they went down pit road and we we were on different guys' pit stops. I was watching the two car. Two car got held up twice coming down pit road. Once on the entrance up here just before the start finish line, and once when he turned into his pits, the 20 car of Joey Logano was exiting. He had to stop, let Joey out, accelerate again, and drive another four or five. So the two or three seconds lead that he had over the nine car evaporated right on pit road. And that lap machine of Travis Quapel there, you see the 38 making life difficult on Casey Kane. In case Kyle he's got to run out. here, he's going to pull out. Oh! Kane's been strong today. Here he is at the start finish line. Pulling out of line. This is the battle for the race lead at lap 95. That was a strong move right there. But again, we've seen the two cars just be a little bit off on the first two or three laps after a pit stop. Whoa, sideways there. Denny Hamlin lost the ground exiting pit road as we showed you. Bush, Kane, and Montoya all went by, but Hamlin back up running strong and gaining those spots back. Here he is to the inside of Montoya for third. And then Denny's made that move work all day long. Drive to the bottom, let the car exit really high, let it build that momentum. And yeah, Montoya gains maybe a car link back, but he's got the position. But the interesting thing about the shuffle in the top three right now is the shuffle occurred not because of pit stops. Those guys had solid pit stops with solid team efforts. They're, the, it shuffled because of issues that happened either entering pit road or in Denny's case, exiting pit road because of the fuel. And, and it was about a four second shuffle. Yes. That's really what cost Denny is, is at least four seconds on the racetrack is what it cost him there. You see the two coming right here. Okay, he's got to check up for the 52. Now he's got to check up for the two. Now he's got an accelerator for the 20. Now he's got an accelerate and he's in. 
those two things right there knocked him back three or four seconds into the clutches of the nine who had a clean pit stop, a clean entry, and a clean exit. And as we all know, green flag pit stops, it doesn't take much to put you behind the eight ball. You're right on board with Kyle Busch. He's had a successful run today. Under caution for the third time today at Michigan, we will show you why in a moment. First pit stops for the third time today, Ralph. Here comes Casey Kane to his pit stall. First one, and this is only the fifth time this year he has led a race. Let's see if they only take two tires this year on this stop, I should say. That's gonna be the call. Two tires and fuel, Phil. Ralph David Reagan was a little bit too free. A little bit better that time than it was the time before. Two tires, oh. Marty. No trouble. David Reagan makes contact with Casey Mears, oh. trying to leave the pits, Marty. Lots Two tires for Tony Stewart, already gone from this end of pit road. Darian Grubb made the call once he saw everybody else take two, Matt. Absolutely the same call for the two of Kurt Busch. He said, keep an eye on the nine, since they will be hitting their box first. Let's see what they do. If they go right sides, let's do the same. That's exactly what Kurt Busch did. We show you the issues for Casey Mears on pit road. His problems compounded on the pit lane after something that happened on track. The reason we're under caution, the 83 of Casey Mears into his teammate, the 82 of Scott Speed. There's number one rule when you're teammates. Do not take your teammate out for any reason. I think we're all going to get in a fight because it seems to be a theme among teammates this year, doesn't it? Back in a moment. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. And make sure you race out to see our new movie, Grown Ups. <laughs> Did you really just say that? Yeah, because it's funny. No, it wasn't. Well, and I guess I shouldn't say that we'll see him in the winner's circle on June 25th. OK, you know, I'm going to put him into the wall. Casey Mears has gone to the garage. The reason why, he had some damage. When he got together with his teammate, that's why we're under caution for the third time today. Yeah, these guys have been running hard at it. And it looked like. Uh, the 83 car split up just a little bit, but again, Kyle, you know, when you, that's one thing a car owner, that's the last thing that they want to see is you reckon out. As a car owner, you expect your guys to give each other room. Here's audio from inside the car here. I mean, really? We're running like in the very back of the pack like crap, and we're going to wreck each other? Really? <laughs> All right, take a deep breath. Step in that. We got a lot of racing to do. That's good. And that's Ryan trying to calm him down. But that's an excellent point. You know, if you're running for fifth and sixth, if you're running like Jeff Gordon and those guys were, you know, at Texas, that's a little bit different. But when you're running 36th or 37th or wherever these guys were running at the time, I'm really not sure. But they were at the back of the back. And that's frustrating for this driver, especially for Scott Speed. And the sponsor, Red Bull, had a little bit of an issue with Weber and Vettel in the Formula One race yeah. a couple <laughs> weeks ago where those two guys wrecked into each other. We're, we're getting very close to, to checking off that for every team this year. Every team made. <laughs> has wrecked each other so far this year. It seems like it is, it's amazing how, how this year has been. Travis Quapel got the free pass. It's an all Pinsky front row. That because Sam Hornish Jr. on the outside stayed out under caution and did not pit. Back to green just past halfway at lap 103. Now we saw Hornish last week at Pocono get clean air and drive away from oh, oh. look at how sideways the two just got Denny Hamlin got right underneath him took the air off the spoiler and then Kurt you see hangs on yeah and then you see these guys just freight train them on the inside now the back the outside line will come back but back to Hornish we saw him get clean air and really drive away in the net in the restart previous to this we saw the 11 get clean air and drive away now Hornish has stayed out so the tires there's a little bit difference here, but still having fresh air and having that clean air is almost the Tony Stewart thing that we saw earlier in the race. Hornish last pitted at lap 86 in that cycle of green flag pit stops. All the others came down under caution for various strategies at lap 100. One driver on the move since the restart, Jeff Gordon. You saw that move he made to jump up to third. Now he's racing Denny Hamlin, about to lose that position actually as driver 24. And Casey Kane right, waiting right there as well. I th that 11 mm. gets through the center better than any car I've seen so far up to this point. And, and when he gets to the center, he gets to the gas quick, and that, and that engine pulls up off the corner. The good news for Denny Hamlin, he was able to sort out his issues that he encountered 
in a cycle of green, pla green flag pit stops a moment ago. Larry McReynolds has more as you see Kurt Busch going to the inside of his teammate for the lead. Larry? Yeah, Adam, I'm trying to explain exactly what happened to the 11 car. They no longer run that mechanical fuel pump up on the side of the engine. They run what we call a Waterman fuel pump. And it's located right here in the trunk area with the fuel cell. It's a cable-driven system. Now, I'm going to go over to my Toyota cutaway engine and rear end assembly. This would simulate pretty much the Waterman fuel pump. And it's driven off of a cable, and you can see how it's turning right there, and that's pumping the fuel. Now, this is the cable, and what drives the cable is right off the back of the camshaft. Now, they ran 42 laps on fuel with that 11 car, and when you're out there on the racetrack at high speed, you're turning all over 9,000 RPM. But when Denny came into the pits, he's probably sitting there about 17 or 1,800 RPMs, and the fuel pump is turning a lot slower. They were very low on fuel, I think, as Mike Ford told him. It got a gulp of air. The minute he got back out on the racetrack up to speed, he got the RPM up, it picked up fuel, and away he went. And oh, by the way, guys, Remember what happened to David Reagan on pit road a while ago? One of my keys to the race, take care of your nose and fenders, even on pit road. Hey, Larry, what is the advantage or the disadvantage of the change that they made running that different car? There's no question, it's a safety standpoint, Wally. Just think about all the times when the fuel pump was up on the side of the engine, especially on the Chevrolet on the right front. A car would hit the wall and we'd see a big fire. It knocked the fuel pump. This is strictly a safety issue. Gotcha. And while Larry was talking about the situation with Denny Hamlin's race car about 30 laps ago, Kurt Busch and Denny Hamlin both able to drive around Sam Hornish Jr. The 77 has since dropped back to fourth. New race leader Kurt Busch at lap 107. And, and, and that's an interesting thing for all the fans that probably watch this sport and don't know. NASCAR makes safety innovations and don't make a big deal about them yeah. sometimes. We know about the Hans collars. We know about the safer walls. We know about the COT. But there's those little things that change internally in that garage area that don't get a lot of press that makes these cars, that will make these cars safer in the long run and make them safer for the crews, the drivers, and the safety teams. Larry mentioned the sixth of David Reagan and that problem he had on pit road. He was sixth when he came to the pit lane. He's now scored 33rd and a driver that has really been solid today. You see him on your screen. The 18 of Kyle Busch. If you weren't with us earlier in the weekend, changed an engine here on Friday. Not much practice time prior to qualifying. NASCAR rules say if you change an engine, you must go to the rear of the field at the start of the race. Busch did that, but he is now in the top 10. And Wally, if you can rally like he has in the first 100 laps, gain the track position, now you've set yourself up for a very successful day. Yeah, he, his car has been awfully strong. We've been watching, and it's very strong in traffic. If this guy ever gets out front, it could be trouble for everybody else if he gets into that clean air. But right now, his car's working really well in traffic. He's been patient, and he's been picking them off one by one. So I think these guys are going to have to be worried about this 18 before the day's over. I, I think so, too. And, I, and let, let's, let's let this be a good example to people to say, okay, why is qualifying important? It's taken him half the race to put himself back in contention. He's raced over 100 laps here at a 200-lap race to get where now he thinks they're in contention to contend for a win and to put themselves in, in position. So when people say, well, qualifying is not that big a deal and we can come from the back, yeah, they're saying it a, a little bit for publicity and a little bit to, to help themselves because yeah, they know it's a big deal. We mentioned the change in the afternoon for David Reagan. He's dropped a number of positions, Phil. Yeah, Adam, what a horrible break. He was up in the top ten solidly for the majority of this race. Came down pit road. We documented that they made the contact with Casey Mears. And unfortunately, that relegated him back to the very back of the pack. He's continuing to run pretty fast laps. But as, it's just the opposite of Kyle Busch, as you're going to watch the problem he had on pit road. Watch him leave pit road. Casey Mears coming in. They actually had to come back in, adjust on the toe end. The car is pretty good right now, but David's running in the 32nd position. And unfortunately, we're over halfway in this race. It's going to be almost impossible him for him to get that track position back. Yeah, and the key is, Phil, it, it, it's going to drive halfway decent if you have fr uh, two fresh tires or four. What's really going to come into play is when he gets some laps on these tires. That's, I think, where he's really going to start seeing the handle go away on that car. See David Reagan on track? Right now, he's in the 32nd position. Kurt Busch continues to lead at Michigan. Hamlin, Kane, Gordon, Burton, the top five. <laughs> 